This is principlesofaccounting.com, chapter 8 on inventory. In this module, we will begin to look at the perpetual inventory system, in particular a perpetual FIFO system. Subsequent modules will look at perpetual LIFO and perpetual weighted average methods. In the previous module, uh, we looked at an example where we had uh, we applied the FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average method on a periodic basis. That is, ending inventory was counted at the end of the period to determine what was on hand and costs were assigned to that at the end of the period. With a perpetual system, we're going to maintain a running record of how much inventory we have and continually update our cost of goods sold and inventory accounts. Uh, this requires considerable more attention to detail. Uh, it requires a detailed tracking system. Data must be captured and maintained for each inventory transaction as inventory transactions occur, whether they are purchases or sales. With perpetual FIFO system, layers are peeled away based on the chronological order of their creation. That is, we buy goods, we sell goods, we buy goods, we sell goods, but as we sell, we're constantly first in, first out. We're selling those earliest inventory layers uh, that exist at the time we make the sale. Uh, each purchase and sale transaction impacts the residual composition of layers associated with the inventory. And furthermore, our general ledger system is updated. Inventory is debited constantly as purchases occur, and inventory is credited simultaneous with recording a sale. We're not going to use the purchases account that we've used previously. Instead of using purchases to capture the dollar amount of the purchases and making an end of period allocation, we instead have a real-time running record directly to our inventory accounts. So here's an example. This is a carryover of the example for the Gonzales Chemical Company from the previous illustrations. We're just now looking at it on a perpetual FIFO basis. It looks like a lot, but we'll break it down into its smallest pieces. On January 1, we started with 4,000 units at a unit cost of $12 each. Now, on March 5, we bought 6,000 units at $16 for a total cost of $96,000. So what we have in inventory at that moment in time is 10,000 units, 4,000 carrying a unit cost of $12, and 6,000 carrying a unit cost of $16. Then we had a sale of 7,000 units on April 17. So those 7,000 units on our list, first in, first out, are going to consist of or peel away the 4,000 at $12, and then from the 6,000 unit layer, 3,000 are assumed to be sold and 3,000 remain in ending inventory. So if we tally at that date, we have $96,000. Remember that number, 96,000. 96,000 is the cost of the goods sold on the day when we had sales of 154,000. Now, on September 7th, we bought 8,000 units at 17, and that gave us total inventory, the 3,000 at 16, and now we've added a layer, 8,000 at 17. Total cost of goods available for sale at that moment is 84,000. We sold 6,000 units, and that consisted of peeling away chronologically. That took away 3,000 of the first layer and assigned it to cost of goods sold. And of the next layer of 8,000, 3,000 went to cost of goods sold, and 5,000 stayed with us as inventory. So that layer, we've got 99,000 cost of goods sold for that particular sales transaction. That's where we ended the year with 5,000 units at $17 per unit, or $85,000. And so when we bought inventory on March the 5th, we debited inventory and I credited accounts payable 96000 But look what we need to do on April 17th when we have a sale. We'll record the sale, the 154000 debit accounts receivable credit sales. Simultaneously, we'll debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the $96,000. Recall I said remember the $96,000, that was the amount we calculated. Next, let's look at the financial statement effects here. On the left-hand side of the screen are the general ledger accounts for inventory, sales, and cost of goods sold. The inventory account, for example, started with 48000 Remember, we had a purchase, 96000 We had to assign 96000 to cost of goods sold on April 17th. We bought 136000 on September 7th, and so on. We wound up with $85,000 in our inventory account in the ledger, which also appears on the balance sheet as inventory. Sales, we had uh, two sales transactions that came to a total of $304,000, which is the amount that appears on the income statement for sales. And then we have the uh, amount of cost of goods sold consisting of the two layers that we calculated, 96 and 99,000. Total is 195,000, which carries into the income statement. So we're simply picking up from the ledger the balances to present them in the balance sheet and income statement 
uh, for our relevant costs. Uh, these amounts may look familiar to you. The financial statement results uh, that we're seeing here under the perpetual FIFO method are the same ones we saw in the previous module with the periodic FIFO method. Gives rise to an important point to note. The financial statement results are the same under the periodic FIFO and perpetual FIFO methods. Very simply, beginning inventory and earlier purchases are peeled away and charged to, charged to cost to get sold in the same order whether the associated calculations are done as you go or at the end of the period. So in other words, if this is our beginning inventory, this level, okay, and, and we add to it by purchases and take away from sales and add to by purchases and take away from sales, we get a certain level of ending inventory from our very last purchases. That's the same whether we're doing this gradually as we go or, we, or if we start here and then we factor in all of our purchases and then subtract all of our sales at the end of the period on a periodic basis. We get the same ending result. So perpetual FIFO uh, gives you the same result under periodic and perpetual. That's not going to be true in the next module when we look at perpetual LIFO, we're going to see that we'll get a different result than we did under the periodic LIFO method. So uh, the next module will then turn to perpetual LIFO as its subject matter.